Hey everyone, and welcome back to Hello Dev World. I'm Rachel, and today is day five of 365 days of coding. If you don't know what that is, every day of 2021, I'm gonna be posting a challenge on my blog in the morning, and then a solution on my blog and on YouTube later in the day. If you would like to sign up to get those challenges in your email in the morning, I'm gonna put a link in the description down below, Go ahead and check that out. Today, we're gonna to be writing a function that accepts an array and given an n by n array, return the array elements arranged in the outermost element to the middle element traveling clockwise. So I'm gonna throw up a image right here to make that a little easier, but basically it's like a snail where it goes from the top to the right to the bottom, up and then over and so on and so forth until it doesn't have any more numbers to go through. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna hop over to the computer so we can get started on this solution. So now that we're back over to the computer, let's start writing some comments about what we need to do. We know we need to create a function that accepts an array. And now we need to create a variable for our final array. So all the manipulation that we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be throwing into a new array that's going to be the final array that gets returned. Then we're gonna make a loop for the parent array, which is the array that holds the n by n arrays. As we loop through that, we want to get the first row, which is the first array. Then we want to get the items to the right. So if you think about the square, we're going from the top and now we're going down on the right side. So we're going to get the items at the end of each array, which is the right side now we're at the bottom so we want to get the bottom row reversed because we're going from the back to the front so we're going to get bottom row which is an array reversed and then we're going to get the left side so we've gone top down left and then up which is going to be the left side of that array so then we're going to get the beginning items of the array which is the left side. And then that's it because then we start that loop over again. So if we grab the first array, that'll go back over to the top and then it'll continue to go in that loop until we're done. So let's start coding. So we're gonna make this nail function that's gonna accept an array. And we are going to make a final array variable that everything that we want in to be returned as the final array is going to get pushed into this. And then we're going to do a while loop here. And this is because we don't really know how long we need to be looping. We just know while there's something in the array of arrays, we want to continue our loop. Then we're going to do final array dot push. And we're going to spread array dot shift. And what this is doing is it's taking that first array and the array of arrays, and then it's spreading it into that empty final array, or later on, it's spreading it into the array itself. So for the first example, it's taking one, two, three, and it's pushing it into that final array and spreading it. So it'll be one, two, three, instead of array of one, two, three. After this, we're going to get each of the last items in each array. We're gonna do a basic for loop. If you don't understand for loops and you don't know how they work, I'm gonna put a link down in the description down below so you can read more about them. While I'm typing this out, go ahead and smash that like button and make sure that you click subscribe and that bell notification so you don't miss any of the challenges for the rest of the year. And then here we're gonna do final array dot push. And this array index here is an array. So for each array in the array, we're gonna do a pop, which takes that last item in that array. And then we're gonna push that item onto the final array. Then we're gonna do another final array dot push. And this time we're gonna spread the array dot pop, which will be that last array in the array of arrays or an empty array. And this is because we're gonna do a dot reverse. So if it were empty or non-existent, then this would throw an error. So we're gonna give it an empty just in case. And then we're gonna spread that. So again, it's gonna, in the first example, it will take the seven, eight, nine. It's going to reverse that. So it'll be nine, eight, seven, and then it will spread that. So instead of an array of nine, eight, seven, it's gonna be the numbers nine, eight, seven. And then we're gonna do another for loop. 
And here we're doing array.length minus one because we don't want that top. And we're gonna get in when we come back through. So we don't want that top row. And then again, we're gonna do a push. Instead of that pop, we're gonna do a dot shift to take that first item instead of the last item. And then once this loop is done, we're just gonna return the final array. All right, and then if we run this, we should get our answer. So this is the first solution that I have. I'm gonna show you another solution. It's a lot like this solution. It's a little different. It's less performant, but it's also less lines of code. I personally wouldn't use it. It's not as readable for other devs, but it's a clever solution. It is less lines of code, so I'm gonna show it to you. So let's comment out this one. So we're gonna make our function again. And we're gonna make a variable for that final array again. And again, we're gonna use a while loop here. So this is all the same as before. Again, if you don't understand anything as part of these functions, I'm gonna put links to all of the different built-in functions down below so you can better understand them. So we're gonna do something very similar to the first one where we're gonna do final array, final array dot push array shift. So what we're doing here is onto that empty array that we created, we're pushing the spread of the first array. So it's gonna get one, two, three. Then we're gonna do a map. So this is going through all of the arrays and grabbing that last one again. So this is to get that right side. All right, here's where it gets a little tricky. We're gonna do an array dot reverse and then we're gonna do a map on each row and reverse them. And then we're gonna return them. All right, now let's run this and we get what we're expecting. I'm going to add some console logs so you can see what this is doing because it might be easier to see it rather than for me to explain it right away. These top two should be kind of familiar. They're very similar to what we did before. This bottom one is where it gets very interesting. So here we don't want final array. We wanna see what it's doing to the actual array. I'm gonna clear this so it's easier to read and I'm only gonna run this first one just because it's easier to see it that way. So here we get that one, two, three, as we expected. And then we get the one, two, three, six, nine. That's the end numbers for each array and then we do this reverse here instead of reversing that bottom row we're actually reversing the whole array and then reversing each one in that array so rather than having to go to each side of the array and manipulate that we're just manipulating the whole thing to move to where we want it to. So we want the reverse of that bottom array which we're going to get in that next shift and then we want that upside which we're gonna get in that pop because the four is now in the end. So we're gonna get that in that pop. And then all we'll have left is the five, which is that over side. And so then we'll be grabbing that in the next shift. So again, it does go in the top, right, down and up, but it doesn't do all of it in one loop. It does the top and the side, and then it reverses all the different arrays and then does the bottom and up because they're now reversed. And then it reverses them again. So then we're back at the top and the right, and then it reverses it. So now we're at the bottom and the left. So I hope that made sense. Please add your solutions down below. There are a lot of different solutions for this. I'm also going to put a link to the code wars that this is originally from so that you can check out other people's solutions and test it out yourself. Please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you know when all the other challenges are coming out and I'll see you tomorrow.